So here is how we can find the inverse algebraically. So let's say we're starting with some equation y equals f of x. We're going to solve that for x. So obviously starting out, it's solved for y. We're going to flip it around so it's x equals. Then we're going to do something very strange, something that you probably never thought you would do in algebra. You're going to actually switch x and y. Literally take all the x's, make some y's, and may take the y's and make them x's. Then the new function that you have is now solved for y because you switched from x to y, and that new function is the inverse of your original f of x. All right, so let's take a look at how that would work. So let's say we have f of x equals 2x minus 5. I'm going to say y equals 2x minus 5, all right? And then I'm going to solve for x. So I'm obviously I'm going to have to add 5 over, so I get y plus 5 is 2x. And then I'm going to write it the other way around so it's clearer to me. And then I'm going to divide by 2 so that I get x is y plus 5 over 2. Now I'm literally going to switch x and y, giving me y equals x plus 5 over 2. This then becomes f inverse. And there we have it. So for this f, I get that as an inverse. Now look at why that makes sense. What does the function f do? f says take your input x, double it, and subtract 5. Well, what's the reverse of doubling and subtracting 5? So if you go in reverse on that, you would have to take a number, add 5, and divide it by 2. So doubling and then subtracting 5, the reverse is adding 5 and dividing by 2. So that actually makes a lot of sense that this would undo itself. Okay, so how would this work with something uh, a little different? So how about the inverse of 2x plus 5 over x minus 7? All right y is 2x plus 5 over x minus 7. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for x. So to do that, really I have to multiply both sides by x minus 7. So I get y times x minus 7 equals 2x plus 5. And when I multiply that side by x minus 7, the x minus 7 is cancel. Another way you can think about it is cross multiplying. So then multiply this out. xy minus 7y is 2x plus 5. I'm going to get the x's to one side and things that don't have x's to the other. So xy minus 2x equals add the 7y and then you still have plus 5. All right. Now on this side here, Notice I do have a common x in there. So factor an x, I get y minus 2 equals 7y plus 5. Finally, divide both sides by y equals 2. 7y plus 5 over y, y minus 2, I meant to say. So there's, it's solved for x. So now I am going to switch x and y y is now 7x plus 5 over x minus 2, and there is my inverse. There I have it. Let's go back to that first example and see if it makes sense with some numbers. So imagine um, that you did f of four. If you did f of four, you would do 
2 times 4 minus 5, you would get 3, because you get 8 minus 5 is 3. And then if you did f inverse, now if I take do 3, that would be 3 plus 5 over 8. I'm, I'm sorry, 3 plus 5 over 2, which is 8 over 2, is 4. So f of 4 gave 3, f inverse of 3 gave 4. So let's see what that means in general. So this is related to the round trip theorem. Basically, if we had two functions, now we just took a function and tried to figure out what the inverse was, that can often be quite difficult to do. So while that procedure is nice in theory, it can be difficult. Another problem we might encounter is we have two functions and we want to know if they are indeed inverses of each other. Well, in that case, we'd be talking about the round trip theorem. What does it say? Once one function f and its inverse g will have the following property. So if these two functions are inverse, then compositions g of f of x will always give you x, and f of g of x will always give you x. So meaning that whenever you compose these two functions, you'll get out what you started with. That's interesting, because for one thing, we saw that when you compose two functions, they're not always the same. In this case, they are the same, and not only are they the same, you get exactly out what you put in. So, uh, let's see how this would work in an example or two.